So I had a follower of mine just ask me about the runner's high. And it's one thing I always wondered about and I never really like, I never processed it. I remember hearing about it in high school. My brother's ex-girlfriend was talking about how she would like go off for a long run and then she would get a runner's high and then it felt so good. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. And I was never big into long distance running. I mean, I would do it every once in a while, but I never, I never did it to such a point where I felt like I actually got high. But I would always hear about this from people that were endurance athletes. And, I, and it just dawned on me right now that the actual high is that the body's going through so much inflammation that the body produces so much cortisol that it gets you high. You produce cortisol, you produce adrenaline, you pr begin to produce vast amounts of endorphins as a way to suppress the pain that you're feeling in your body. And so, you, so you're enabled to actually like push through it. It's almost like the body's saying, hey, look, we kind of have to give up on this idea of maintaining joint integrity. So what we're gonna do is get you high as hell so you can't feel the damage that you're doing upon yourself. So to those people that do all that endurance training who get that runner's high, I hate to break it to you, but that's probably what's going on when it happens. You're inducing like probably irreparable damage to yourself and you're becoming too high to even notice that it's happening to you. I hate to, I hate to kill your buzz, sorry. I'm Dr. Tyler Panzer, a pharmacologist, and what he said is quite wrong and misleading, so let's break it down. So he says that the runner's high is stemming from the cortisol and adrenaline, or the stress of the running. That is just flat out incorrect. While adrenaline and cortisol can help provide you with energy to complete physical activity like running, it plays no role in the actual runner's high. He was correct in mentioning the endorphin system, which acts on the opioid system in your body, does play somewhat of a role in the runner's high. But the real molecular driver of a runner's runner's high is your endocannabinoid system. This is actually the same exact system that cannabis products such as THC or CBD act on in your body. When you run for long enough, your body makes more endocannabinoids, specifically a molecule called anandamide. This is basically your body's natural cannabis molecule that regulates mood, autoimmunity, inflammation, sleep, and a whole host of other processes. It goes all throughout your body, including crossing the blood-brain barrier where it binds cannabinoid receptors, giving you that calm, mood boost boosting feeling. So when you really think about it, on the molecular level, a runner's high is essentially like microdosing on cannabis. And people with a strong endocannabinoid system will get a stronger runner's high, versus individuals with lower endocannabinoid levels may not feel the runner's high as much. And now CBD works by slowing down the breakdown of your endocannabinoids. So I've actually tested this with some of my long distance running friends and had them take some CBD before running, and they got a noticeably more potent runner's high. Your body is built with a natural cannabinoid system to reward sustained movement. Have you ever had a runner's high? Let me know in the comments below.